Yeah, I'm here. I'm waiting for them to call me. Yeah, well, she ain't gonna call your ass. She, she, uh, she probably laughing at your ass. Hey, now, uh, I don't know what the fuck you is. I don't know, man. Um, we just trying to get some answers. We, we, we just want some answers, man. I mean, Pippin ain't got the answer for you. I mean, Pippin, they return Pippin trucks all day long, man. We can't get no uh, answer. The truck blew up, damn it. Now, do they want their truck today or today? I'm confused. What's going on? Uh, Let me try to call back again. Uh, 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 before you call, man, I'm going ask you this one last time. Are you sure I'm making the right decision? Uh, I mean, I ain't finna tell him you return the truck. I'm just trying to figure out how to return the truck. No, I know how to return it. You just want to see back. You, you know want to know if you if you're making the right decision. Let me see. The truck then blew up. It's sitting at the dealership. You want to know if it's the right decision. Right, let me, well, let me let me call back again. Yeah, mate, let let's see what they say. Hold on. Let me wait a minute. Let's see what Pippin think. Does Pippin think it's the right decision? Thank you for calling Lone Mountain Truck Lady. We're gonna try to we're gonna try a different number. Calls may be recorded for quality assurance. Por español. Número nueve. O para continuar en inglés. Quedas en la línea. Gracias. If you know your party's four-digit extension, you may dial it at any time. Ask our service manager when you get the fee. When she picks up again, ask our manager. If you currently have an active lease and would like to speak to your account manager, press 3. For accounting, press 4. For HR and employment, press 5. For employment verification, email hr at lonemountaintruck.com or fax to 866 222 Five, seven, five, seven. To repeat this, press, press star. Okay. Okay. Ask, ask, ask for. Ask for a manager, yes. Ask a customer service rep manager. If they try to ask why, just be like, look, with all due respect, right, I'm just right. only going to talk to you. Press okay. Well, how can I help you? Hey, I'm looking for a manager. Um, Of which department? Uh, The leasing department. Um, okay. A couple different ones. Is it? Uh, do you have an application in? Do you have a current lease with us? Yeah, current lease. Current lease. Okay. And what's the phone number on the lease? I don't have a phone number listed. I'm just calling for someone else. Okay. So, so it's not regarding your lease. Right. I guess I, I'm not sure I can get you to one, but I, I don't think that they're going to give, give you any information if you're, you're not the owner of that lease. That, that's fine. Okay. And who's the customer that in question? Uh, it's going to be Justin Fraser. All right. Hold on just a minute, okay? All right. Hey, this ain't got none of mine because there's only one manager. I only want to... When I call in, I don't want them to think I'm playing games and shit. You ain't even, they don't even got your number. Huh? They don't have your number. Yes, I know, but there's only one manager in that department. They're going to be like, did you just have somebody call in here as well? Like, uh, I don't know. Hold on before they pick I'll up on right you. Now, right, hold on, hold on. Hey, hang up. I'm going to call Pender. You going to call? Yeah, I'm going to call right now. All right. All right, one second. All right, you make the phone call. All right, moment of truth. Oh, man. If you got to go through all of this <laughs> to lease a truck. <laughs> For quality assurance. Capital, how can I help you? Hey, how's it going? Um, can I speak to Jamie? Hold on just a second for me, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, why you didn't just tell me to, to ask to speak to Mr. Jamie? I could've, we could've, we could've, what are we doing? I could've talked to Mr. Jamie. You could've gave me that damn long time ago. We got me over playing games on the phone. Uh, let's listen to Pimpin' about to pick up the phone. We finna all learn what's going on over there in the world of Pimpin', Pimpin', Pimpin'. Here it come. Y'all ready? Is y'all ready? We gotta get close for this. 
I don't know what Pippin gonna say, but we finna let me move, let me move my phone. Uh oh, we're Pippin in the making now. Is it easy to turn Pippin truck in, or will he release his pimp hand? Pippin got good music when you call that. The gentle music, yeah, that. Look at that. Yeah. That's a payday music. You must be calling to make a payment. <laughs> Wait a minute. This is Jamie. Hey, Jamie, how's it going? Yeah, how are you? Great, great, great. Um, hey, is Michael around? He is, but what's up? I'm your account manager, so you really don't ever talk to him unless you're in big trouble. What's big trouble? Like you're super delinquent, and we're gonna come get you to get the truck. Oh, ah, okay. Um. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to talk to Michael about a few things. So. Do you do you not think that I can help you? Um. I can't confirm or deny. I just feel a little bit more comfortable talking to Michael. Well, well, what's going on? He's not available. Now, now he's not available. But he wasn't. He wasn't before, so that's why I was trying to help you. And because okay. I'm your account manager, so. What does Michael do? Michael's my boss. The collection the supervisor. Oh, okay. Correct. Either, either way, um, yeah. So it's not looking good. Uh, apparently, the head is gone on the truck, and I just uh, put like fifty-five grand in the, or fifty-five hundred into it for an oil cooler. Uh, once they fix the oil cooler and got her up, filled up with cooling and stuff like that, they're talking about um, cooling is squirted all out the damn um, cooling tape, and it's not, uh, they're saying that it's the head or something like that, like the head's causing extra PSI in the cooling system, and it's switching all the cooling out. Uh, okay. Like, so it's looking pretty ugly, man. Um, I know, uh, and it, you know, I just have to do a show. I can't get a tow to my, uh, you know, I'm going to have to get a tow to one of my mechanics instead of paying dealership cost. And, uh, you know, either way, we're looking at 10, 12, 15 grand tops plus the truck and the insurance and all that stuff. So I'm looking at worst case scenario, which I'm not pulling the trigger now. Um, I'm actually uh, making some calls and I'm coming to a few different, um, uh, how can I say, um, I'm looking at a few different avenues right now that's looking pretty good. So, uh, again, I'm pulling any triggers now, but uh, worst case scenario hits the fam and I just got to, you know, get out this deal. What's, how, what's the process for that? So, let's talk about a couple things. One is we we obviously don't want you to, and I know you wouldn't want to either. We don't want you to be in a position where you approve for some repairs and then you don't have the funds to back that up to take care of it. I'm sorry, can we, can we start over and say that? I didn't understand that. Yeah, that's okay. We don't want you to, and I know you don't want to, be in the position where you approve um, some repairs to take care of that and then now it's more than what they said that it was going to be and then you're not in a position to take care of it. No, I didn't approve the repairs or, or I wouldn't even speak on it. I, I wouldn't uh, confirm or deny if I'm in a position to take care of it or not. It's not. It's not uh, a matter of if, if I could do it. It's is is if I want to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like 15k. Yeah. So um, understood. That that's cool. respectfully, of course. Respectfully. So, yeah. No. Yeah. Absolutely. So let's say that you're not or you don't want to, um, then you would need to do one of two things. Okay. One, if you did a surrender. That means you bring the truck back to us, to one of our locations. If you do an abandonment, that means we come and pick it up. Okay. And how does okay. that, how do both those scenarios went out? But yeah, I mean, abandonment definitely sounds pretty bad or disrespectful. And I wouldn't want to, you know, slap my mouth in the face when they gave me a shot right. when I was needed it. But hey, yeah. you know, yeah. Again, I mean, these things, unfortunately, they do happen. Obviously, nobody... Um, 
signs a lease thinking, okay, this is what's going to happen. But they do happen, you know, from time to time. You know what? Well, not to cut you off, if Lone Mountain had a program integrated into this, like, oh, man, I know you came into some kind of stuff for repairs. Go ahead and swing it by. We got a couple of texts that we keep on payroll for this. Uh, yeah, let's slap a new head on there. We can get the head. 4500 or I can get to have 4500 You guys can't believe me. You keep watching, obviously, chunks. When you leave us in the wind, like, hey, yeah, I'm sorry. Off dealership, let them rake you, you know what I mean? Have fun. And it's like, well, I can spend 15, 20 grand to get this truck back on the road. I go to their auction for 7500 rebuild the whole motor for 7500 and 15 grand, I own the truck and have a new motor. Yeah. And this is the information that's I didn't know when I signed that. the lease. <laughs> That's not yeah. Yeah, that's how part of the program we do. We do <laughs> but I will tell you that whenever there is like a larger repair like that, uh, customers can always send us the estimate so that we can look it over to make sure that it looks right. You know, um, oh, yeah. different, parts, different parts of the country are going to be a little different um, labor wise. Um, but every so we're going to pay a thousand in the ballpark of you know, uh, it's not. He want to surrender the truck. Yeah, exactly. Right. We wouldn't think that, let's say, somebody needs a new engine and somebody's quoting them 60000 Okay, well, anybody with a brain knows that's not the right amount, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. But, um, but yeah, but so anyways, so that's where that's where we would be on that. Like I said, whether it would be a, a voluntary surrender where you bring it back to us in abandonment where we have to go and get it. Um, either or, you would still be responsible for the deficiency of the truck. Once the what? It back. Deficiency. What's that? The balance left over. How? The balance left over on the truck um, after we either release it um, or we wholesale it. So let's say we're able to fix it. We can release it. Well, whatever that we would release it for, you would just be responsible for the difference of that. And then your balance, if there was one still here, if we could wholesale it for more than what your balance was here, then you wouldn't owe anything. Okay. And was that balance carried over to our credit or something? Uh, you would actually talk to our, um, our recovery department. They're the ones that you would make like payment arrangements with. Oh, what again? I said, can I speak to that department? Nope, not now. You only talk to them unless you have an account active with them, and you don't right now. So what is the recovery department like? They come into place once a customer's lease has been uh, essentially terminated, and you still owe a balance with us. If you still owe a balance, what are you guys doing to work up a... A payment arrangement with us or something? Or are you going to uh, send that straight to our credit and, and hope collections to get it out of us or what? No, we we don't uh, outsource that. That's what our recovery department is for. I'm, I'm sorry, one more time, Jamie. <laughs> we don't outsource that. That's what our recovery department is for. Uh, do you guys put this on our credit at all? Say that again. Is our credit, is any of this going to be attached to our social security number? Yes. If there's a, if there is a balance sitting out there and owed, yes, it will be. How if this is a lease? I thought it was part of being a lease. Because you signed, or I should say a customer signs a lease saying they're going to pay X, am X amount of months at, at this price. And if you don't fulfill that, that money is still owed. Who's supposed to eat that? Not us. Why would we eat that? I'll take it personal. I'm just asking no, no, question. no, no, no. I, I don't. Yeah, I mean, you kind of sounded personal. Like, Ooh, why not us? Like, you just work for Lone Mound, you're not Lone Mound, you know. I appreciate your honesty. Um, so you guys no, were attached to our credit. talked about before many times whether you or a customer or 10 customers, whether they're successful or not, that doesn't affect me, you know, personally. Do I want you to be successful? Absolutely. You didn't go through all this trouble just so that you could fail. No, that's not a failure, but let me ask you this. Um, if you guys put it on our credit, is it going to be considered, what's, what do you call that? A, um, what do you call that when you uh, have to get your car uh, repossessed? Is that a repossession? Mm-hmm, yeah, it's a reposition. 
they got to put a repossession on our credit for for the amount that's due. Um, I don't know if that's how that reports, to be quite honest, especially if you get it to us. Who can I talk to that knows? I can find out for you and then I can let you know. find out for you and then I'll let you know. Okay. But uh but my I guess my bigger question to you, because I know Michael will ask as well, what what's your what's your plan right now for the truck? Are you gonna leave it at the dealership or you're gonna try to get it towed back closer to home so that you can get it worked get it on back. if that's what you're gonna choose to do. I'm, I'm trying to figure out that I'm, t- I'm trying to figure out that now. That's why I, I uh, called in for the 30th. Which, you know, the original plan was just to replace the oil cooler to get back on the road. Mm-hmm. But of course, of course, when the oil cooler got damaged, it must have, uh, I guess, caused some damage to the head, gasket, possibly the head. So um, we're looking at all that now um, to pinpoint exactly. But either way, I'm, you know. And then about $4,500 or so? Or they don't know yet? Uh, if it's the head, we're looking at about 12, uh, if not more. That's more than my rebuild. Uh, and yeah, I already did the oil cooler. So it's like I'm going to be, like, I paid at 12. Um, even, let's just say 10. You know? How do we get the truck back to Long Mountain? What is the process? Come on, let's quit stalling now. Let's get to the point. How do we return the truck back to Pippin? It's just 500. And most of them are charging about $4,000. That's like 20 hours of labor. So that's okay. That's that's the going rate right if you know what you're doing. Like, you know how not to get raped right out here. But if you have no choice to let these guys do it, then... She don't care nothing about the bill now. How do you get the truck back to them? Like $6,800 uh, plus the gas ticket of $1,600. Let me tell him. Let me tell him. He's doing a lot of talking. $50 the labor. So you can do the math at that point. So looking at 12000 plus I already did 5000 for the oil cooler. Was that seventeen thousand dollars? Because I just did injectors, uh, yeah, like back in December when I broke down last time, or November. That was nine grand with a DPL filter. So this truck is horrible. I don't know who had this truck before. I thought it was owner. It was an owner operated truck. Turned it back in uh, when his when his warranty is up. And he was throwing the dog shit out of it because it's just horrible at this point. He, he blaming the last driver. It's it's the last driver's fault. Okay. Um, hold on one second. I want to look at one more thing for you. Now if you want to get into the lease purchase program. Yeah, let's trade. I'll trade. I'll trade and you guys carry over some neg- negative equity. Give me give me a fleet truck, a swift truck or something. Someone that wouldn't ran fifty thousand pounds every day of his life, you know? Because we don't even have anything used right now. What? Look. What the hell? Oh my god, this uh, shit here. Like, only a lease driver would say something that like God damn. And I've seen them when I put when I bought the truck, see People on payroll fixing and, and, and turning wrenches. You guys just buy the head 45, slap it on there, and put this thing right back on the market the next day. It'll be sold in, in 48 hours. You know what I mean? So I'm saying at that point, what, how, would, how would any negative equity be rolled over to me anyways? Well, that might be an option. I mean, in the event, if you wanted to essentially bring it to us Come on. we could see what we could get for it after all Come the on. repairs and everything but if there was something left over you'd be responsible for it yeah I'm not gonna say that I, I, again I'm looking into a couple of different options honestly um but again you know I came into some great info that I didn't know at the beginning Trucks are going for seven to ten thousand at auctions, and I got mechanics that are rebuilding for thirty five hundred all day long. The rebuild kit's going for three to four grand, so that's seventeen out the door. I own it and it's new. Versus seventeen here, 
and a month later it breaks again. EGR cooler, EGR valve, nonsense. Yeah, you know? whatever. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah, uh, that's always an option too. Yeah. So we'll look into it. Um, we'll see what's best. But let me ask one more question. How do we get the truck back to you if um obviously it's not drivable? Um, where? Well, we have a, we have five locations around the country. Closest will be Chicago. I'll be five hours away from there. Uh, I'd have to check to see if we have a sister company closer to that or not. Uh, okay. I think you got some in Oklahoma, maybe. But um, that would, because because you're in Oklahoma right now. Oh, we're going to get the truck back. We're going to get the truck back. We're going to get all the truck drivers together. We're going to get that truck back. Now, whoever got the step deck on deck, whatever, we're going to get that goddamn truck back to that long to the mountain. I think in Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota. Oh, wow. Indiana. Okay, Indiana. Come on. Let me ask you this. What if I get it told to you guys and you guys fix it? Could you, could you just bill me for that and we charge like double a month until I'm caught up? Until I knock out that uh that repair equity and we get back down to the standard fourteen hundred? No, they wouldn't do they wouldn't do that. They don't do um customer repairs like that. You guys don't give a fuck about us, huh? Usually like fuck it, it's here. Take it, buy it. I know it's gonna break, but have it anyways. What? Yeah, he's got repair shops everywhere, the ability to bill us, it's crazy. You guys make money when we bring the truck back and you can resell it. We don't we don't have full service shops. Okay, oh, that makes sense. The shops, yeah, the shops that we have right here, they do little um, just to really look over the truck, get it cleaned, and get it out there for the front line. We don't have full service that, that's shops. What they get it. They get it from the auction and they get it clean and they put that out there on the line. Did you hear that? Play it again. Rewind. Play it again. Let's just call it 29th before our car from... Uh, any answer could be made at this point. I'm going to check in with my team and um, Yo, see what we came up with within the next few days. Of course, it's going to be the weekend, but all right, next week, and we'll be in touch. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. Thanks so much. Uh-huh, bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, boy, she kind of pissed me off at the end, like, I mean, not even heard this long amount of the general, like, okay, I get it, y'all want to be a full car lot, don't want nothing to do with repairs, but come on now. Like, I ain't need tripping, you know, this business at the end of the day, that's how they want to run their business, cool, but 